Hi and welcome to WEH videos. My name is Skip and this is part two on my learning to fly series for the beginner. In this video we will discuss bare essentials for our first introductory flight. And I know it's the flying that you guys want to do but there are some things you need to know before your first flight. So we'll start with the pilot operating handbook or the POH or an information manual out of work too uh, for the Cessna 172N. I hope you were able to download one and had a chance to browse through it little, uh, just a little bit. If you're using the Cessna 172 SP such as the one that came with X-Plane uh, that's fine there isn't that much difference and you can find a POH for that airplane just as well. The pre-flight's pretty much the same. The main differences between the two airplanes are the 172 SP has a fuel injected engine and the 172N is carbureted. The SP also has a larger engine, 180 horsepower compared to the 160 horsepower for the 172N. So to get us flying right away we're going to take a quick look at the pilot operating handbook for some information we need. And the first thing we need, need to know are some air speeds. Speeds we need for takeoff, for a safe flight and landing. And these are critical speeds for each airplane and they're all different depending on your airplane. And they're referred to as V speeds. And here is the pilot operating handbook for the 172N and we have air speed limitations and indication here and I have actually made this a little easier for us to follow so let's just get rid of the handbook for a second and we're gonna go over these V speeds now I don't know why they call them V speeds it's got something to do with velocity it's a mathematical type of thing but these are speeds we need to know and they call them V and E, V and O, V A and the like. So V and E is a never to exceed speed for the 172N which is 160 knots. The V and O is the maximum speed for normal operation which is 128 knots. And the V A is the maximum maneuvering speed. VFE is the maximum speed for the flaps. So you can't fly faster than 85 knots or you're going to tear the flaps off the wings. And then we have speeds for normal operation. VR is the speed for rotation. That's when we pull back on the yoke a little bit to take off and that's 55 knots. Then we have VX and VY and these are VY is the best rate of climb and that's 73 knots and the best angle or rate of climb over a terrain this is for getting up faster if you had to clear an obstacle that's 59 knots and then we have the stall speed with flaps up 50 knots and a stall speed with full flaps of 40 knots and then a crosswind, a maximum of 15 knots. So if you're taking off and that wind is coming from straight from the left or the right, uh, if it's over 15 knots, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Now, if we lose our engine and we want to have to glide, we want to be between 56 knots and 68 knots. And that's going to depend on the overall weight of the airplane. All right, to help us with these speeds, we have on our speed indicator we have colored lines and this is really helpful when you're flying so you don't have to do a lot of math to remember some numbers. The white arc here is for flap settings. This shows us a safe flight speed uh, when we have the flaps down. 85 knots is the maximum speed for flaps. The green part here is for your normal flight and then we have yellow for cautious flight if the weather's bumpy and things aren't going really well you want to be really careful here however if it's a really smooth a perfect day 
uh, you can push it a little bit, but then we have our red line here at 160. So this really helps when you're flying. You don't have to think too much. It's pretty obvious what your speeds need to be under certain circumstances. So that's all we really need to know from the POH right now for our introductory flight. But now we need some airport information. We need to know the airport elevation and things like that. So we're going to have to go to airnav.com and check out that information. So let's go to airnav.com and let's just type in the 085. And here we have our information. And we're going to start with our location. And right here we see we have an elevation of 723.3 feet or 220 meters. And that's good to know. And as we come down a little farther to airport operations, we see that there is no control tower. Pattern altitude. This is important. 1,723 feet MLS. Now we get to airport communications. We have the CTAF and the UNICOM frequency. And this is the frequency we will be using when we're flying around a Benton Field to communicate with other pilots. And next we have runway information. So let's scroll down to runway information. And we have runways 15 and 33. We have a length of 2,420 feet by 75 feet. Not a real large or long runway. Uh, the other important thing is a traffic pattern. We have for runway 15, we have a right traffic pattern. And for 3-3, three, three, we have a left traffic pattern. Now, I'm going to be going over these things when we're up in the air, so don't worry that you don't know what these things are. Like Pattern altitude is an altitude that we're going to fly, obviously, when we're in the pattern. And we'll either be flying a left pattern or a right pattern. But we'll go over that once we get up in the air. I think that's enough airport information for now. We have our traffic pattern. We have our pattern altitude, and we know which pattern to fly for each runway. And we know our takeoff speed and the other speeds. And now what we need is our weather information. So for starters, we can just look over here at the windsock and see what it's doing. And it looks like right now it's favoring runway 33. Wind is coming from the north, so to speak, and we want to be taking off in that direction. So uh, looking at the sock, I'm thinking, okay, we want to take off on runway 33. However, we're going to want to listen to the Unicom uh, channel 122.8 and make sure that there's not somebody coming in and deciding to use a use runway 15. That could be a real problem. So we need to be paying attention here. Like I said, this is a non-towered airport and things can happen if you're not careful. The other thing we can do is just use the X-Plane map and stick the cursor over the airport and scroll down. Click on the airport and this gives us Benton Field 085. We click on details and now we get a report of the conditions and it says here that the winds are calm and we have an altimeter setting of 29902 and this helps us a lot. All right, we're getting a lot closer to getting in the air. Now all we have to do is do our pre-flight and if we open up our POH we have a section on pre-flight the things we need to do to inspect the airplane. And there's a lot here to do. But to keep this simple, what I have is a little check sheet that most pilots carry on them now, or we have with our airplanes, so we don't have to get the manual out. And here's the one I use. I carry this in my flight bag. And this is the pre-flight inspection for the 172N. And the first thing we do is we get inside the airplane 
and set things up for our inspection. So let's do that. Let's climb in the airplane and see what we need to do. And we start with the Hobbs meter. We want to check that and we're not going to do that now. We have required documents. These are documents that have to be in the airplane. And there's a control lock and that normally is a little thing that sticks inside here so the yoke can't move and that's so when the plane is on the ground and tied down that when the wind blows it doesn't have the flaps and those things flapping all over the place. Okay so now we want to make sure the avionic master is off. That is where are you? Avionic master is off. Well we got everything off so we want to turn the master switch on. So let's come down here and we're going to turn the master switch on. How can I see that? There we go. We got the master switch on. Ah, turn on. There we go. And what next? Put this over here. Uh, the flaps down. So we're going to put the flaps down because when we're outside we want to test these things and we, uh, we want to make sure they're down. So let's get our flaps down. There, right over here. We got our flaps down. What's next? Master switch on, flaps down. We check our fuel gauges, which are right here. And we check our lights. So we're going to turn the beacon light on. That's all we really need now for lights. So we're going to come over here and turn the beacon on. All right. So what's next on our checklist? Move this back. We got the lights on. And now we turn the master switch off. Well, why do we do that? Well, now we're going to go outside and take a look at things. So, master switch off. Well, this is going to be kind of hard to do on the simulator. Most of these things you won't be able to see anyway. So, just let it suffice that we are going to check the fuselage and the tail for all these things here. And you can read through this in your pilot operating handbook if you like. Um, but let's just get back in the airplane and do those things we need to do to get the airplane ready to start. Okay, first of all, before we can start the engine, we want to make sure that our seat belts are on, the circuit breakers are in, and let's check the carb heat, which is that little lever right behind the yoke there. Carb heat is off. All the electrical equipment is off. And the avionics master is off. So all our switches are off and our main switch is off. And we want our fuel set to both. So let's come down here. We have our fuel to both and the brakes are set. So we're just going to step on those brakes. The toes up here are brakes. You push those forward. Those are brakes. So we got our brakes set. Now we come back and we're going to turn our master switch on. Let's going to turn the master switch on. What's next? Then we're going to turn the beacon on. So let's turn the beacon on. Come over here for the beacon. That's the light back here that lets people know that we're going to be doing something in the airplane. It's a warning sign that somebody's in there and they may be starting the engine. All right, so we got the beacon on and We've got the mixture to rich. That's this guy right here. We want to push that all the way in. Mixture to rich. rich, And then we prime as required. On the 172N, we have a little primer over here. We pull this out and push it back in. And this manually puts fuel in the carburetor so the engine will start. Assuming, of course, it was cold. So we prime as required. Now we're going to set the throttle to a 1 8 position. We want to move it in just enough. Then we open up the window and we yell out there, clear prop! So if anybody's standing around there, they know we're going to start the engine. And then, lucky us, we get to start the engine. So let's just hit the starter here. And now we're going to bring the RPM up to about a thousand RPM. Put the brake on, that would help. And you can't hear anything because I don't want any sound to interfere with the talking. I, it's just too much interference though. So we're going to bring the RPM up to 1000. And then what are we going to do? 
uh, we're going to check the oil pressure, make sure that's in the green. And that's pretty cool. We are ready to taxi. But unfortunately, we're out of time to continue. I like to keep my videos right around 15 minutes so you don't have too much information to digest. So in part three, we will cover the taxi to the run-up area, and then we will do our introductory flight flying in the pattern. And in that flight, I will go over some of the stuff that I didn't cover in this video. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please click the like button. If you would like to send me a message or leave a comment or have a question, that would be great. Thank you again so much for watching, and God bless.